boys and girls, welcome back to Summer Club. And today we're going to go to Egypt, Cairo Street in Egypt. It's not really Egypt, it's in Belfast. And a very famous street called Cairo Street is named as is, is mentioned. Uh, whenever we think of the Israel, the land of the Bible, Egypt was its neighbour, and I think of Joseph, I think of Moses, two very, very important Bible characters in the Old Testament, both lived in Egypt. Egypt. So we're going to learn something about that today. Let's sing a song. Here we go. Enjoyed that there. Let's go and find out what happened with in Cairo Street in Egypt. Here we go. Good day, boys and girls. We're walking around Belfast here in the Holy Land because there's lots of streets named after places in the Bible. This is Cairo Street. And I thought, what country is that? And that's in Egypt. And I thought the Bible talks about Egypt a lot. And whenever I think of Egypt, I'm reminded of Joseph and Moses and all these wonderful characters in the Bible. Whenever we think of Joseph, first of all, how did he end up in, in Egypt? He wasn't in Egypt at the start. One day, for example, the older brothers were looking after sheep and as their father said, Joseph, go and find your brothers. And they said, here comes Dreamer Boy, because Joseph used to have dream and talk about his dreams, how one day the sun, the moon, the stars would bow down to him. And one day there were sheaves in the field and they all bowed down to him. And they said twice, Joseph, we would never bow down to you. And whenever Joseph came about 50 miles away from his home place, his brothers were looking after the herd flock of sheep. And they said, here comes Dreamer Boy. And they got him and he took off his coat that his father gave him, a lovely coloured coat, and he threw him into a pit. The Bible says he actually cried like a baby, crying out for his mother, and he had no mercy on him. And they thought a wild animal will come and they'll hear the sound and the tiger, the lion or the bear will just bounce on him and that'll be Joseph gone forever. Then one of the older brothers thought, no, maybe that's not fair, that's cruel. And they looked and they seen camels coming and there were Ishmaelites people on the camels and they were actually going to Egypt for the market to sell things, to make money. And they said, why not sell Joseph? He's 17 years old, we'll sell him as a slave. And they did. But the Bible says whenever Joseph was in a pit, the Lord was with him. Whenever he was put onto the camel, tied up, the Lord was with him. And that was a very lonely experience. Joseph taken away from the people he loved, he turned against him, put on the camel's back, going with people he couldn't understand, and now he sold as a slave. 
And Joseph is bought by Potiphar, like the king of the country. And he's so well behaved, so well mannered, such a good worker, he's quickly promoted into running the affairs of uh, Potiphar. But one day Potiphar's wife, many times she tried to capture Joseph to be with her, to lie with him. And Joseph, being a strong child of God, a strong believer, said, I would never sin against your husband or sin, sin against God by doing that. But because she could not get her way with Joseph, she screamed and she accused Joseph of being with her. Joseph then ends up in the prison in Egypt. So when I think of Cairo, there's a man called Robert McConnell, a developer. And when he's been to Egypt and the Middle East and different countries, and he's named these places around the Holy Land in Belfast over Bible places, hoping, I would imagine, being a devout Christian, that people would search these areas, get into the Bible, read the stories, and God could challenge and God could save, that they can become Christians as well. Joseph's now in the prison, and the Bible says he interpreted two dreams about the, about the butler, and the baker, and both the dreams came true. The king then has a dream about there's going to be a famine, and Joseph's able to translate the dream of the king, and there was a famine, and Joseph was promoted to being the prime minister over all of Egypt. Imagine, and the Lord was with Joseph in the prison, and now as prime minister, brought as a stranger, brought as a prisoner into a land, and God looks after protecting him against all odds, and now he's promoted to being the prime minister. The famine came, and now what's happened is the people are hungry over across different countries, Jacob, Joseph's father, he assumed because the brothers brought back Joseph's coat. Bible says he killed a wild animal, put the blood of the animal on his coat, took it to their father, Jacob, and he wept bitterly. He said, I sent Joseph out to find you. A wild animal's got him, and now he's dead. And not one of their brothers spoke up to see what happened. But you see, the Bible is going to, tells us how God was able to turn this around to get the attention of his brothers. And the Duke, Jacob sold his, Joseph sold his brothers, I want you to go now to Egypt because the prime minister's got food for everyone. Take some money and go and buy food. So they came and he brought before the prime minister. He was Joseph. They didn't recognize him. And they bowed down. They said, prime minister, will you please give us some food? And Joseph recognized them, but they did not recognize him. And he, he started to talk to them. Where do you come from? Who do you live with? And then Joseph then began to weep and he had to leave because he saw his brothers and he loved him. And he came back and said, brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And they bowed down to their brother. Twice they said they would never bow down to Joseph and now they're bowing, bowing down for mercy. Joseph could have had them put in prison. He could have had them killed, but he didn't. Joseph forgave his brothers. Joseph is a lovely picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. People turned against him also. People tried to put him to death. Uh, but of course the Lord Jesus was put on the cross. But at the end of his life, G Jesus turned around and forgave those for they did not know what they do. A lovely picture of forgiveness and compassion and mercy. Joseph not only forgave them, he sent them back to bring back his father, his family, and their children, and their wives, and all their animals. He said, go back and bring them all here, and I'll make sure you've got land, and you've got food, and you've got homes, and you've got shelter, and all these things. What a lovely picture of compassion and forgiveness. Lots of people today have problems with family, and they don't talk to each other. They no longer love each other. They, in fact, they hate each other. But Joseph... The Bible's teaching us through Joseph's life. We've got it. When people do us wrong, we've got to overcome that. Pray for enemies. Pray for those who use us and abuse us. And God can turn it around for good. Then the Bible says there was a little baby born. Because the Pharaoh realized there's so many of these Israelites, the children of Israel, they called them, they're going to overpopulate us. So they made a law that every baby boy must be killed under two years of age. A picture of what they tried to do whenever Jesus was born. One of those babies was called Moses. And they made all the Israelites into slaves. But the wee baby Moses, his sister was called Miriam, and his brother was called Aaron. And his mother, Jochebed, put him into bulrushes, three months old, and he was in the River Nile in a basket. And the princess found him, loved him, and cared for him. And that wee baby, who was an Israelite, became the prince of Egypt. Being an Israelite, being an Egyptian, growing up for 40 years, learning the Egyptian laws. And one day then, a terrible thing happened. Moses had to run for his life, living in the wilderness for 40 years. Then God said, Moses, through the burning bush, I want you to go back 
to your people in Egypt and I want you to bring them out into the land that flows with milk and honey. Moses was the one who wrote the first five books of the Bible called the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And I thought that wee baby was saved because of what happened, and you can trace it right back to Joseph. Everyone meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And all these stories you can trace back to the handiwork of God. Many people in the Bible never got life easy. Many people got it very, very difficult. Even today, Christians have been persecuted all over the world because of what people are doing. But Cairo in Egypt, Egypt's also a picture of the world. And whenever you become a Christian, you're no longer off this world but because all things pass away and all things become new. What a lovely story in the Bible about Moses and Joseph and Egypt and how the Lord was with him as he journeyed on. Great story. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Was it that great, boys and girls? Really, really enjoyed that. There's so much to learn from whenever you see men about Egypt, especially the Bible and Egypt together. Let's finish with another song now. Here we go. A great song in Psalm 34 and 10. Do you remember this song? song that's all from Cairo Street in Belfast for today and we'll see you next time at our summer club bye bye now